Speaking for Success by Daryl Walker. 92% versus 20%. Those numbers indicate the amount of students that learn a second language in Europe and in the United States. 92% of European students learn a second language, whereas only 20% of American students learn a second language. Uh, European students typically start to learn their second language between the ages of six and nine years old, whereas American students don't begin to learn their second language until 14 or 15. In 2016, a study by Pew Research Center reported that only 36% of Americans thought that learning a second language was important. Well, I'm here today to tell you guys why learning a second language is important. And here are the six reasons I came up with. So, the first reason is it helps boost brain power. Second, higher academic achievement and test scores. Third, it gives you a head start in your language requirements for college. Fourth, it increases empathy. Five, it also increases a child's understanding of their first native language. And then also it creates better career opportunities in the future for those same kids. Boost brain power. So brain density. Uh, the London's Welcome Department of imaging neuros, neuroscience studied uh, the gray matter of, uh, of bilingual students and monolingual students. The bilingual students were broken up into two sections, uh, kids who learned before the age of five, kids who learned between the age of 10 and 15. And the study showed that the bilingual students had denser gray matter than the monolingual students. And the students who learned uh, the students who learned a second language before the age of five, they had the densest gray matter of, of everyone. Next is higher academic achievement and test scores. So a 1997 study by Ellen Bialstock, she tested the comprehension of 134 four and five year old children. And in this study, it showed that the bilingual students had greater comprehension than the monolingual students when it came to reading and writing. And then another study in 1992 done by the College Entrance Examination Board uh, showed that bilingual students scored higher on the verbal section of their SATs. And they, just, they also scored higher in all the round sections just because of uh, their, their, their brains were more advanced in, in certain different ways. Their problem solving was, was much more higher. A head start in language requirements for college. So when it comes to learning a second language, you have to, there, there are requirements for college. There are also high school requirements. Um, but it also it gives the child a head start cognitively and linguistically. So cognitively, it improves the child's problem-solving skills, uh, it, it improves their memory, and it also improves their decision-making skills. Um, and then linguistically, when they're, if they start at a younger age, by the time they get to college, they might be fluent in that language, or there's a potential that they are fluent in that second language. Uh, whereas a kid who starts in high school who's 14, 15, they may not necessarily be fluent by the time they get to college, and so with those students who start earlier and are able to be fluent, they may not have to sit in a, a course for the entire semester taking a language, and they can actually go and study abroad in that country and get more immersed in that culture. Increased empathy. So in 2016, a study by Samantha Fan et al. from the University of Chicago conducted a study to test children's empathy through their perspective. So what the test asked was, um, it was, it was children from the age of four and six, bilingual students and monolingual students, uh, and then they had a, a, a random adult 
And so then there were three sizes of cars, a large car, a medium car, and a small car. Uh, the child could see all three cars. The adult could only see the large and the medium car. And so then the adult would ask the students, move, uh, move the small car. And so the bilingual students could understand the perspective of the adult. And so 75% of them moved the medium car because they understood that was the smallest car that the adult could see. Whereas the monolingual students, only 50% of them were able to understand the perspective of the adult and move the medium car. And so with that being said, uh, the study also suggested that multilingual exposure promotes effective communication by developing perspective taking, by allowing you to put yourself in that other person's shoes and understand their perspective uh, culturally, um, because now you're, you're learning their language, so you'll learn, their, learn about their culture, learn their, and understand their culture, so it, it increases your empathy, and it also helps increase that child's empathy, so as they're growing up. Increased understanding of native language. So when you're learning a second language, it really mainly focuses on the mechanics, the grammars, the conjunctions, sentence structures. So allowing a, a young child to start learning a second language between the ages four and six, or even before the age of nine, uh, it'll help with their reading and writing skills because they'll be able to understand sentence structures, grammar proper, they'll be able to understand those things much more better because they had to understand it when they were learning their second language so they can apply that to their first language. It also allows them to understand how to manipulate their first language. Uh, multilingual students typically are better uh, writers and they're better at editing their like papers and, and grammar uh, some of them will come, become editors for newspapers once they're in school, stuff like that. They, they write very well. Um, the next one is better career opportunities. And so in this uh, kind of self-explanatory multilingual uh, boucher resume pops off the screen. Um, they see that you speak a second language kind of boost you to the top of the field. Uh, so if you start teaching a kid young how to speak a language, by the time they are in that working, that working class or that field of trying to get a career after college, or even if they don't go to college route and they just go straight to the workforce, they can put that on their resume that they speak a, a different language. Um, and that, uh, that'll give them that opportunity of landing that job. And then it also broadens their career opportunities. Uh, instead of just getting a job in their, their native country, they may also be willing to get a job abroad in, a, in the country that they can speak fluently in um, because now that language, there's no language barrier there. And so, to conclude, those are the six reasons why I think that young children should start learning a language young uh, because it's going to help boost their brain power. They're going to have better cognitive and linguistic uh, achievements. Uh, they're going to test higher on, on uh, standardized tests. Uh, it's going to give them better opportunities career-wise, college-wise, um, and it's also going to help increase their empathy. Any questions? I have a question. Okay. <laughs> so if, if, if someone, a parent, wanted to get their kids, you know, second language, it, this is probably off the cuff question, where would they start? Where would they go to get them where trained they, to get a second language? Right? Yeah, tutors. Tutors, tutors are great. Mm -hmm. um, there's many websites nowadays that allow it. I know there's a web or a program called Mango uh, that actually teaches you um, how to speak a language from a native speaker. Uh, so like when you're working on the project or the assignments, you'll hear a native speaker saying the words so you can actually know how the accent sounds and stuff like that. And then of course you got the Duolingos. Um, but what I would recommend is that 
it's a requirement in schools um, because that's how it is in Europe, right? And that's why Europeans have a 92% rate of students who are learning the language because they start from such a young age, not because they're willing to, but because they're, they have to. It, it's a part of school requirements. So I think that it should be a part of school requirement. But other than that, I do think parents should start sending their kids down to teach them second language, whether it's with a tutor or some sort of uh, learning program, language program. Yes. So in your slide, you said that people who have a uh, native language that they're very higher and when it comes to writing because they're able to form sentences better. So why is it that those kids, when they come from their native country, even though they speak both English and their native language, why is it that when they come to this country, they're forced to take, well, some of them are forced to take like classes like where they're taught how to like read and write? That's a good question. Um, I'm not actually 100% sure on why that will be, but I would assume it would be just to make sure that those kids are able to understand English, that they can read and write English, and that they can perform well speaking and writing in a classroom in English. Okay, I had a question about, there was some, a statistic, no, it wasn't a statistic, but there was, um, what was her name, Fran? You Samantha Fan? Yeah, yes, mm -hmm. yes. And you said that those that were multi lingual, lingual had a better perspective. Uh -huh. I think is what you said. Uh -huh. So did, were the instructions the same then? To, I mean, did the, all the kids know that the adults only saw two cars? Yes. The, they, they, well, I don't know if the children knew that the, that the adults could see those can only see those two cars. Mm -hmm. I think it was based on, because it was, it was kind of like a wall that was up. Mm -hmm. It was like a wall in between the adult and the child. So visually. Yeah, so I think the child just visually understood how this is, how this is set up. They can't see this small car. So I don't think that the kids knew that they couldn't see it. I think they just understood that those right. kids, or that the adults can see that small car, and then that's when they moved the medium car because that was the smallest car in their okay. line of vision. Any other questions? I have one more question. Yes. Um, what do you think, because you got a lot of good data, right, about the benefits of having a second language, yeah. but what second language? Any second language. You know what I mean? Is um, there one that's more, Preferable than other, or so. Of course, worldwide English is the most preferred second language. Uh, but as for Americans, the most preferred second language would most likely be um, Mandarin, which is a very hard language to learn. Okay. But it would be Mandarin because uh, China is, has such a large population and make up such a large population of the world that it's the second most spoken language in the world behind English. Um, but then, of course, Spanish, because uh, there's so many Spanish-speaking countries, there's probably over 70 Spanish-speaking countries in the world. So nice. I would say those two. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Learned a lot. Thank you. All right. Did you set a timer? You did?